Hey Phoenix fam, what's poppin? Today we're gonna talk about radio communication setups. I'm gonna show you what a beginner might want to use and I'm gonna show you what I built for myself for my Milsim setup. The idea is to get you started with radio communication in Airsoft. What parts do you need and how do they work together and what are their pros and cons? The first thing of course, why would you need a radio while playing Airsoft? Because communication is key guys. It can make a big difference if your team is communicating on setting traps, ambushes, exchanging mission information. All that is super valuable so you and your team can come out as a winner on the airsoft game field. You wouldn't use your mobile phone to call your buddy to tell him, hey, there's a guy hiding in that building over there. First, it's super hard to use your phone with gloves and you don't have free hands. And of course, you can't communicate to a lot of people at the same time. And this is where radios come in. Radios are very helpful and a valuable tool in your hands to be better than the enemy team. This is the perfect guy to get into it, but you also, with your team members, with your team buddy, you have to start training on how to say stuff, how is the best way to communicate, so make sure to get the proper training in. Can you imagine holding this in your hand while playing airsoft? No. Do you want to have it in your chest rig and then like take it out every time you want to communicate? Probably also no. So today we're going to talk about radio setups, which means they should be aesthetically pleasing because we want to look cool on the airsoft field. And of course, we want to find our buddies again that we lost during these intense airsoft battles. A little example, I played with my team, the German Spearheads. We played on a rather small field and we were like eight, nine people communicating really intensively, where is the enemy team located? Where is enemy players? What are they doing? And we kept that flowing really well and we were able to pretty much spawn trap them within no time. It was blatantly clear that our communication was interrupting their movements and actions immensely. So don't underestimate good radio communication. So what are we gonna do? We start with the radio and we build more and more on top of that. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Let's start with a little beginner setup. I have here the Midland G5 XT. This is actually my first radio I ever had. It's a 16 channel PMR personal mobile radio. Generally people call them also walkie talkies, just as plain simple walkie talkie. You can buy them in a set of two, for example, with your buddy and they have 16 channels. It's really easy. You dial them in and you can talk with a push to talk button right on the side. This you would maybe put in your plate carrier pocket or in your chest rig, something like this here. But this, of course, can get really cumbersome if you're in a firefight, for example, and you have to pull your radio out to give away the enemy team's position. This can be valuable seconds you lost because you had to open a pocket, get the radio out and communicate. What you also cannot forget is this is a speaker. Any radio communication that would get to you is gonna be loud. So it's gonna give away your position. For example, if you're hiding inside a building and enemy team is coming in or something. This kind of walkie talkie is definitely what I recommend for a beginner. What I started using is are these little security in-ear microphone adapters. They plug in on the side of the radio Jesus Christ, this is all tangled up. This has a little earpiece, a security style earpiece that goes around your ear and inside. Then you clip this to your collar, to your plate carrier, and you have a little push to talk button microphone. You also put onto your shirt or your plate carrier setup like here, like I had it on my old setup actually. You can talk to people like this, no problem, and no one around you can hear what the incoming radio communication is going to be to you. So no secrets are revealed to maybe enemy team player that are close to you and the radio communication is not giving away your position. But you have to be very careful with these kind of because these earplugs are removable and what actually happened to my friend on the game field is this got stuck in his ear. That was really scary so don't jam it too far in there because it got trapped and we almost had to go to the hospital. He was really unlucky. He was wearing my PTT thing and this is completely stuck inside his ear and we can't get it out. Ouch. Shit. <laughs> Only see a little part like this and all this. Ugh. 
Jan, nicht so gut, ne? Other than that, I think these are really cheap and functional addition to your radio. They just connect to each other. You can have the radio in a front pouch, run this to your ear and your hands free almost until you will want to do a little communication. You press the button, you talk into the microphone and you're good to go. Also, what's great with these security style earpieces is they work under ear protection. And this is what I actually did for quite a long time with my old helmet. I ran my ear pro over them because I couldn't figure out how to properly run these with my sword ins. So I started using these and this worked really well for me because you can also still communicate when you take your helmet off. One little tip I want to give, I see that on the airsoft field all the time, don't mount your radio on the back of your plate carrier because that means if you want to change something, you want to change the volume, you want to change the channel, you have to ask someone to do it for you. You don't want to do that. You want to have it in front or on the side where you can reach it and make changes. You don't want to have it on your back where you actually have to take your whole chest rig or plate carrier or whatever you're wearing off. You don't want that. This is what I recommend for a super easy beginner setup, a little walkie talkie and security style in ear headphone with a little microphone. Let's get to a little bit more sophisticated setup for that you can either use a Midland G5 or G6, G7 or a Baofeng UV5R Plus. These are really nice, very cheap but durable radios. But guys, be careful because wherever you may live, you may need a license to be able to operate those. You can use them on the same channels as these, the personal mobile radio and Freenet. Freenet are open channels because you can end up on channels you're absolutely not allowed to be on, such as, for example, police radio, pilot radio, the robot channel where you summon Godzilla or something. Don't just type in a random string of numbers, especially the channels that are programmed in from the starts are a really bad idea. If Godzilla comes and he runs after you because you called him on the radio, it's not my fault. Guys, let me show you a little bit of a more sophisticated setup with active hearing protection. That means we have the Howard Lights active hearing protection. I talked about these quite a lot in my recent Amazon Best Airsoft Finds video. I highly recommend those because they protect your hearing. But you can also make them work with your radio, which is really cool because you can use them as headphones. So what you're gonna need is your little Midland or your Baofang, however you want, and you attach to it a little speaker mic. This will work by itself, of course. You can have this in your pocket. This here on the side, this works as a speaker mic. So it's a speaker, but you can also talk into it and it would transmit to your buddies. But this speaker mic has actually also an aux port and the hearing protection have an aux cord. So we can just combine these with a little aux cable. Everyone has seen before those 3.5 millimeter aux cables and we can run the little midland on our active hearing protection. Super easy setup, super cheap and works like a charm and you look cool on the airsoft field with active hearing protection wired into your radio. Let me recap real quick. I have my active hearing protection with an aux cable in it. I put that on. Then the aux cable is running to my active speaker mic that I would hook up on my plate carrier, probably maybe here because I'm right-handed and usually I have my left hand free. And this would go in a pocket, side pocket, somewhere where I have access to it without my buddy. And now I can hear all incoming radio chatter on the inside of my headphone and I can use this as a normal microphone to talk into. This is actually how my buddy Basti is running his comms. I already got a lot of questions about it because I showed his helmet in both of the recent videos. This is how he runs it and yeah, a super easy working setup. Now let me show you my personal setup, how I have it set up at the moment because I also went through all the steps before I already showed to you and I ended up with this. 
Guys, radios is for dorks. Copy that, shifting frequency, stand by. There's entire clubs based on radio and it's very, very complicated. So I'm trying to explain it to you the best I can. What I have here is two Baofeng UV5Rs. I run a dual comm system, which means I have two radios at the same time running. So I can communicate with, for example, command and with my squad mates at the same time. So I'm the RO, the radio operator. I'm gonna show you how I put all the pieces together and how it is actually working. I have the Baofeng UV5R Plus here. I have the bladed antenna I got off of AliExpress. I showed you, check the video. But to connect the Baofeng to my real U94, push to talk is a real struggle because the push to talk has a six pin adapter. The six pin adapter is for military grade radios and they will work effortlessly. But we need a little Kenwood and this is really hard, but JCI comms were so nice and made me these amplified adapters. That means six pin on this side, a little amplifier that's amplifies the sound that is coming from the Baofeng because it's not loud enough that you could hear it in your Paltos. And then we have Kenwood. This attaches to my Baofeng. I have the six pin connector, goes to my push to talk, which I can just push. And this obviously connects with the J11 NATO plug from my Paltors. Paltor Comtex 3's dual comms. That means both these headphones have a down lead cable that goes into a PTT, a push to talk. So I can have two radios connected to these at the same time. These Peltos, those are 10, they're battery powered. They're also sound amplifying like the Howard lights, but they're let's say a level up from that because they have a microphone already built into them and they have these downlet cables that attach to a real steel PTT. I also have on here the gel cups for extra comfort and I mounted them onto my helmet with the Unity Tactical Mark adapters and those are really tight, perfect. And now I can press here, I would hear radio communication here from my Baofeng and I can talk on this line, blah, 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 and I can talk on that line, blah, 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 with someone else. This is my little complicated setup, I would say, or very, very, very sophisticated, because I wanted to run real Peltor dual comms. That was my initial idea, but I couldn't run these really big military grade radios. I wanted to use my Baofeng, and this is how I could make it actually work with the JCI comms amplified adapters and with the real PTTs that came with the Peltos. So guys, personally, I used all those other approaches as well. And this is basically where I ended up with because I wanted to run dual comps. That was just my goal and this is how I made it work. There are also a lot of repros of Peltors or Sordens and PTTs and I absolutely do not recommend them at all. I don't like them. Maybe they work for you. They're, I guess, great for Airsoft and you want to run them because you're on a budget. That's totally fine. Everyone can do what they want in Airsoft and this is why we all love this hobby so much. But they will not protect your ears. And I think this is really important, especially when you play in America, because stuff like this can happen. AJ, come on! It is really loud and they can save your hearing. Of course, it's also a question of budget and motivation. If you want to do dual comms, then you have to go this way. If you just want to run a single comm in your ear with a little security in ear, that's totally fine. It works perfectly. And this is what I wanted to show you. You can go super hardcore, sophisticated, but it's going to work as well as this very cheap option I gave you in the beginning. No worries. Much rather than going with a repro style like a Z-Tech, I would go with, for example, an Earmore or the Howard Lights. Those are actually rated to protect your ear and you can get them really easily on a budget. Guys, take this guide to get started into radio communication in Airsoft. Take it, evolve, mingle mangle around, optimize your personal favorite radio setup from my tips. And I would love to hear from you how you ended up doing it. All links to all the items are of course down in the description and guys you know what to do smash that subscribe button other than that I hope you're having a good one we may be allowed to go back out pretty soon 
But before that, watch another gameplay and I'll see you soon. Okay guys, crunch crunch, bye bye. Happy hunting.